Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be examining the characteristics of the tropical rainforest to see how the plants adapt to their natural environment. The tropical rainforest is located in lowland areas between 5 to 10 degrees north and south of the equator. The tropical rainforest can be found in places such as the Amazon Basin in South America, the Congo Basin in Africa, Eastern Australia, as well as Indonesia. The climate associated with a tropical rainforest is the equatorial climate. Now the climate graph shows that rainfall is heavy and well distributed throughout the year. The annual rainfall is 2,000 millimeters and this is largely the result of ICCZ. In most places, the ICCZ passes twice for the year, bringing two very heavy periods of rainfall. This is called double maximum. Now the climate graph also shows that temperature is high throughout the year. This is due to its proximity to the equator. The average monthly temperature is about 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. The annual temperature range is very small. It is about 3 degrees Celsius. In terms of the diurnal temperature range, it seldom exceeds 10 degrees Celsius. And this is due to the thick cloud cover which reduces the temperature in the area. Now, the tropical rainforest has a unique structure. The plants are arranged in a number of layers with each layer displaying distinct characteristics. The tallest layer or the highest layer is the emergence layer. Below the emergence, we have the canopy layer Below the canopy layer, we have the under canopy, also called the understory layer. Beneath that, we have the shrub layer. And oftentimes, we combine the under canopy with the shrub layer into one layer. Below the shrub layer, we have the forest floor. Let's look at each of these. The emergent layer is the uppermost layer made of the crowns of the tallest trees in the rainforest. This layer has towering trees such as the kapok. The top of these trees are exposed to the full force of the sun. This is an open, windy environment. Foliage is often sparse on tree trunks, but spreads wide as the trees reach the sunny upper layer where photosynthesis can occur. The canopy layer is made up of trees with wide, shallow, and umbrella-shaped crowns, which are interlocked with each other to form an almost continuous cover. The dense network of leaves and branches 
forms a roof over the two remaining layers, blocking winds, rainfall, and sunlight, and creating a humid, still, and dark environment below. Trees have adapted to this damp environment by producing glossy leaves with pointed tips that repel water. Let's look now at the under canopy and the shrub layer. The under canopy layer, also called the understory layer, is often combined with the shrub layer for most classification. Here, there is less light and less wind and the air is more humid. The crowns of the trees in the understory or under canopy layer are oval shaped and grow in gaps where sunlight filters through. The plants in these layers are shorter and have larger leaves than those in the canopy layer. The large leaves make it easier to catch the sunlight which filters through the canopy. And final, finally, we have the forest floor. The forest floor is the darkest of all the layers, making it difficult for plants to survive here. As a result, there are only few shade-loving plants at this level, leaving the layer almost void of growing plants. What is more noticeable is a thick blanket of leaf litter. The leaves that fall to the forest floor decay rapidly. Decomposers such as worms and fungi thrive on the forest floor, breaking down the decaying matter into nutrients. The shallow roots of the rainforest, of the rainforest trees, absorb the nutrients so that the soil is generally infertile. Now let's look at the characteristics and adaptations of the rainforest trees. The leaves have drip tips with curved ends, which help them shed excess rainwater. They are also leathery to protect them from the strong sun heat. Trees have a slender trunks with thin, smooth bark. Now in climates where rainfall is low, Trees adapt by having thick barks. However, in the equatorial climate where water is abundant, the barks are thin. Trees do not branch off except at high levels where they can make use of the sunlight. It is also common to see flowers and fruit growing directly from the trunks and branches of trees and not just from their twigs. Trees also develop a wide root system known as a buttress root, which is able to support the weight of the tall and heavy trees in the rainforest. Now, besides the trees, there are a number of other plants in the rainforest. These plants form various types of relationships with the trees. One such plant are epiphytes, which are plants that use dead material, which have which has accumulated in the forks of trees. While they get no nourishment from the host plants themselves, they are able to benefit from their support 
as well as obtain sunlight at these levels. Lianas are climbing plants that begin their life in the shade of the forest, but grow upwards by climbing on other plants so that they can gain access to the sun. Obviously, we are seeing that sunlight plays a very important role in the characteristics of these plants. Now onto the strangler fig. Stranglers begin their lives as epiphytes, then send down long roots that reach to the ground level. These roots grow stronger and more numerous with time until they become a tight noose around the host trees and eventually strangle them. Saprophytes are plants that live on dead and decaying organic matter, like decaying tree stumps, for example. The saprophyte releases enzymes on the decaying matter, which converts the organic matter into a liquid, which the saprophyte can then absorb to obtain its, nourish, its nutrients. Pitcher plants are carnivorous plants. They have modified leaves known as pitfall traps. A prey trapping mechanism featuring a deep cavity filled with digestive liquid. The rim of the pitcher is slippery when moistened by condensation or nectar, causing flying or crawling insects to fall into the trap. The liquid in the pitcher will drown the insect whose body will then become gradually dissolved. Okay, once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you benefited from this presentation. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe.